Well, I think we might just have had the best looking running shoe of the year so far arrive here at the channel. And it is these beauties. So Salomon's new S-Lab Pulsar 3 trail running shoe in this rather fine looking go faster black and red colorway. Now this is definitely an awesome looking trail running shoe, but we all know it doesn't always come down to looks when we're going for new running shoes. And you know, it can be the sexiest looking shoe in the world, but if it runs like a pair of old wellies, then it's not gonna be much use. So in today's video, we're gonna break these down in a bit more detail, and then I'm gonna be lacing these bad boys up and testing them out. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be a good day and I am excited to take these out for their first run. We are back with another trail running shoe first impressions video. Thanks for tuning in again, guys. I'm Lou Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So I always get pretty excited when Salomon release any new s Lab products, whether it be kit, shoes, or apparel. Now, if you're new to the world of Salomon running kit, uh, their s Lab products tend to be designed and developed with the help of their pro athletes. And they just happen to include ultra running queen, Courtney Dawwater, and UTMB multiple winner, Francois Dan, and those guys know a thing or two about trail running. Products are normally constructed out of state-of-the-art fabrics and materials, and they also normally include lots of new exciting innovations. Obviously, this level of development doesn't come cheap, so the S-Lab products do seem to be pretty expensive these days, and the new S-Lab Pulsar 3 is no exception. So these are gonna retail in the UK for 190 pounds. With the shoe being designed to move quickly over technical terrain, my pair in a UK 9.5 tip the scales a very light 215 grams. We've got a six mil heel offset, so you get a stack height of 24 mil at the heel and 18 mil under your forefoot. And the shoe is due to release in the UK on the 1st of May. The biggest changes with the latest version of the S-Lab Pulsar is there is only one option available now. So back in the day with the previous version, you used to be able to get the standard S-Lab Pulsar, but you could also get a soft ground version that would give you a deeper lug depth to handle those wet and muddy conditions a bit better. So this time around, Salomon have just opted for one shoe, but it does come with that slightly deeper, more aggressive 4.5 mil lug pattern that you used to get on the soft ground shoe. So if I flip the shoes over, you can see we've got this nice chunky 4.5 mil lug on this all-terrain contagrip outsole. We've got forward-facing chevrons on the forefoot there, so they're gonna provide you with good levels of traction when you're running fast on the flats or pushing hard uphill. And then we've got reverse-facing chevrons on the heel section. They're gonna dig in and give you good levels of traction and control your speed when you're bombing down technical descents. And the lug pan looks like it should offer pretty good levels levels of traction on any underfoot conditions. We've also got a dual compound energy foam midsole construction. So we've got softer foam on the heel section, slightly firmer under the forefoot. Uh, I tried the shoes on just to check them for sizing and I was actually surprised how nicely cushioned that midsole was for an S-Lab product. Another thing I have to show you is this is a very, very narrow fitting trail running shoe. And you know, I mean, it's definitely not gonna offer me a lot of wiggle room in the toe box. And you can see it's been designed for a narrower foot to give you that real foot hugging feel. I mean, you know, it's gotta be one of the narrowest looking trail shoes I've ever seen. And in fact, I think it looks more like a pair of ballet shoes than trail shoes. And then moving up to this very light upper and Salomon have chosen to use Matrix in the construction. And this is a, a very light, super breathable, highly durable fabric. Uh, we've got this sort of one piece booty design. So there's no sort of traditional tongue in the S-Lab Pulsar 3. You literally got to pull your foot through this elasticated heel collar. Uh, and when I say pull your foot through, you really do have to pull it through because it is pretty tight to get on. But one once you're inside this upper, it does feel very secure. So once you've fought your way into the shoes, all you need to do is slide the Salomon quick lace system down and then pop those laces into this handy pocket that's been positioned on the top of the shoe just to stop those laces getting snagged or caught on anything when you're out on the trails and then you are ready to go running. I often find that this quick lace system is a little bit Marmite. You either love it or hate it. I actually ran in Salomon shoes for years and years and I'm a big fan of it. I think it works really well. I'm definitely happy to see we've got the handy pocket 
it placed in a much more sensible location and it's not like that poor pocket design that we poor pocket design that's a bit of a tongue twister but yeah that poor pocket design that we got on the salomon ultra glides we got some zonal padding under that lace pocket just so it gives the top of your foot a bit of protection when you pull those laces down nice and tight and we've got zonal padding around the ankle collar and in the heel we got some structural overlays wrapping around the heel working down around those laces and wrapping around the toe box just to get this soft flexible upper some substance and then up front we've got good levels of protection from a tow bumper. Right, there you go guys, a quick breakdown of the new S-Lab Pulsar 3. Now, I've had the shoes for just over a week now and I really have been itching to try them out. So I've been talking enough, I'm gonna go off, squeeze my feet into the shoes and then we're gonna be getting out on the trails and testing out this latest S-Lab product. So we have come up to the beautiful Tahiti Woods for today's test run and we've got beautiful blue sky and sunshine. The only downside is I'm going to get my nice shiny new shoes really muddy, but the woods should be a great testing ground when it comes to the new S-Lab Pulsar 3. So we better get running. We are just coming up to four miles. Happy to say the legs are feeling good. Well recovered after running Falmouth um, half marathon on the roads. So if you haven't seen it, our previous first impressions video, I took the new carbon plate racer from New Balance, the Fuel Cell Elite V4s. I laced them up and I ran the challenging Falmouth half marathon. So beautiful race on the coastal roads but it does have about 1300 feet of elevation so it was definitely a good test for the shoes the shoes formed really well and so did the body so I managed to clock what an hour 37 minutes taking it pretty easy on the first half and then pushing on the second half and we obviously filmed a first impressions video as we went round so I'll link that video in the description below in case you want to check it out also if you have been watching the channel and you've been enjoying the content but you're yet to subscribe don't forget guys it's super simple to do so maybe today's a day just click on that little red box down there in the corner only takes a couple of seconds and it is completely free but it is a massive help to the channel while you're there don't forget to hit that bell notification because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content as far as the shoes go like any s lab product it feels super exciting to run in. Size wise, I went for my standard 9.5 UK, maybe could have gone up half a size to a 10. I am quite close to the end of the shoe on my right foot. Uh, this shoe's been built for running quickly over shorter distances, so I don't think that will be an issue. I'm not having any issues at the moment. If I was gonna take this shoe and run a bit longer, then maybe it would have been better to go up half a size to a UK 10. But the overall fit of the shoe on my narrow foot shape is awesome. That booty sort of sock construction, it really does fit like a glove. I feel so secure in the shoe. It actually feels like a second layer of skin rather than running in a trail shoe. So very secure at the midfoot, really well held in the heel. So you feel very connected to the shoe. It's definitely pretty muddy and slippery still in the woods, although the trails that we've run on so far are pretty well groomed, so nothing overly technical yet. If you see some of our videos when we've tested out trail shoes into Hiddy Woods, there is a technical ridge line. So super challenging, off camber, uh, lots of slippy tree roots and technical sections to deal with. And that's kind of what the S-Lab Pulsar 3 is sort of been built to run on. So we're gonna head to that ridge line now and we'll see you on the other side. Someday when I've grown older I can see it all clear from above Looking back on it all Okay, we are heading onto the ridge line. It looks pretty wet. Wish me luck.
some fun. Has to be one of my favourite sections into Hoodie Woods, that ridge line, especially when you're pushing the pace. It is technical, it's all off camber, lots of slippery tree roots, and it was pretty muddy up there today as well, but such great fun. You have to be so focused and so dialed into the trails under your feet. I haven't run it for a while because if I'm honest, I haven't had faith in my body to deal with the pressures that come of running that ridge at speed, but it's always made a lot easier when you're running in a trail shoe that just feels so connected underfoot to the trails. I also think Salomon have got the level of cushioning just right in that dual compound midsole setup. It's felt comfortable on everything I've run, even on the harder, more compact trails. And it still gives you that level of ground connection that you want from a, a trail shoe that's designed for running on technical trails and moving quickly. Like most S-Lab shoes that I've worn, it feels very exciting to run in. We've done what, just under seven miles so far. Uh, I'm gonna actually loop down out of the woods and I'm gonna connect up with the coast path with the weather being so lovely. I don't need to shelter from the rain and wind today, which is a pleasant change. So yeah, we're gonna head to the coast path and then we'll head on back to the studio and we'll wrap this video up with a quick conclusion. Well, my lovely looking new S-Lab shoes definitely got a bit muddy in the woods today. I gave them a quick brush off and I'll give them a proper clean after I've filmed this conclusion. But it was great to hook up with the coast path for the last couple of miles. Always awesome running up on the North Cliffs. And it's actually the first day of spring here in the UK today. And it was very much like a spring day out there. And the cliffs is a great place to run when you're running under a beautiful blue sky and the warmth of the sunshine. The run was great fun, but I was quite surprised with how wet and muddy the woods still are in certain sections because we've had a couple of nice days weather-wise and I thought that would really help to dry the woods out, but that really wasn't the case. Uh, not that that's a problem, because we want conditions like that when we're testing out new trail shoes on the channel, especially shoes like the S-Lab Pulsar 3. Now, if you've ever run in an S-Lab shoe, you'll know what I mean by this next sentence, because these are shoes that put a big smile on your face when you pull them on your feet and you get running. And all I wanted to do was find the most technical sections of trail and run as fast as I possibly could. And that comes down to this very snug, precise fitting upper and the great balance of comfort and connection that you get from that midsole, you know? I really did feel like I could take on the trail running world in these. Now, even though this is probably the narrowest running shoe that I've ever run in, the Matrix Upper did feel nice and comfortable out there on today's run. I didn't feel like I was sort of crammed in that toe box or restricted in any way. And I think that comes down to the fact that it is a, it is a very soft and pliable upper, but we've also got this booty construction. So it kind of wraps around and stretches around your foot and actually performs more like a sock than a running shoe. However, I would say if you do have a bit of width to your foot shape, then these are probably a no-go, just because it is so narrow. Now, I understand why Salomon make their S-Lab uppers, you know, very fitted, giving you that nice, snug, precise lockdown feel, because that really does help when you're moving quickly over technical trails. It makes you feel really dialed into the shoe and connected. But I'm not sure why they've made this one so narrow in the toe box and at the midfoot. I personally think with the level of cushioning that I got from this energy foam and the level of underfoot protection I got from that profile film worked into the midsole, I could probably run these up to say 20 miles in distance, depending on the type of terrain, or maybe even push them to marathon distance, which I think is pretty good for a, a very lightweight, relatively stripped back trail running shoe. However, I think where they'd really excel is sort of distances between 10K and half marathon, especially in that race environment, because that's kind of what the shoes have been designed to do. The 4.5 mil lugged all-terrain contagrip outsole performed well out there today. I spent a lot of time running on sort of more compacted, firmer trails. You saw in the video, there were some sections of mud and we had to run that off camber technical ridge line. And I had no issues with grip or traction throughout the run. I think the shoes would struggle in really muddy conditions because we have only got that 4.5 mil lug depth, but I think the S-Lab Pulsar 3 would cope with everything else really well. So wrapping up with a quick conclusion, and I really enjoyed running in an S-Lab shoe again. And in fact, they really reminded me of some of my favorite S-Lab shoes from the past. 
I think a lot of that comes down to this sort of old school black and red colorway, but also how they felt and performed out on the trails and that sort of excitement feel that I got when I put them on my feet for the first time. I personally think a trail shoe that's been designed to run quickly over technical terrain should feel exciting to run in, and these definitely tick that box. Obviously, these are an expensive kind of niche trail running shoe, but if you are a sort of racing snake with a narrow foot width, I don't know whether I mentioned it, but these are the narrowest shoes I've ever run in, and you're looking for that lightweight, uh, very comfortable, responsive, fast feeling trail shoe that fits like a glove and looks super cool, then I would definitely recommend checking out the S-Lab Pulsar 3, because if you want that from your trail shoes, these definitely deliver, and they should be available in in the UK from the 1st of May. So that is a wrap on today's first impressions video. Really hope you enjoyed it, really hope you found it helpful. Don't forget if you did to like, comment, share and subscribe because it really is a big help to the channel. And if you've got any more questions about Salomon's new S-Lab Pulsar 3, please feel free to get them in the comments below. Uh, I'm off to the bathroom to grab the scrubbing brush to give these a nice clean to get them looking all shiny and new again. But for now guys, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel, it really is appreciated. We'll be back here very soon with some more exciting running content and as always stay safe and keep on running especially shoes like the S-Lab Pulsar 3 uh, especially shoes like the Salomon uh, S-Lab Pulsar 3 uh, and they normally include lots of new exciting innovations uh, obviously that level of development doesn't come treat treep <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting my, my words muddled up. <laughs>